Hey, hey everybody, I'm Z Garcia, and today I'm taking a look at a two-player only board game called Prowler's Passage. In this game, you and your opponent are rival thieves, and you are developing a network underneath the city in order to rob the rich blind and come out ahead at the end of the game. So, that's basically it. Like I said, it's only a two-player game. It's a fairly short game as well. And you are just trying to be tricky with the scoring opportunities, take more than you allow your opponent to take, and come out ahead over two rounds of scoring in the game. So, let's take a look at how it all flows together. We'll come on back after that, and I'll give you some final thoughts. To set up the game, we're going to shuffle up the tiles and set them up here randomly. There will be a few that are left over. Those are set aside. We are going to randomly place these tokens. Sometimes the two sides of the tokens are different. And then we are going to randomly place three achievement cards over here. And certainly several of them will be left over. And then you are ready to begin with everything else in place. So, the uh, game, the objective of the game is of course to get the most victory points and you are going to be doing that over two rounds of scoring. One, some interim scoring, and then the final scoring at the end of the game. Uh, you pick a start player, so let's say I am the start player, and the other player is going to pull one of these buildings one space towards them. So we're going to have uh, our uh, purple player there, pink purple player, start with the blue building on their side, and we are ready to begin. So each turn is very simple. It has three steps. I am going to pick a road, on which to place one of these tokens, one of these little wooden sticks. I am going to take the token that is sitting on that intersection, on that road, and then I am going to draw towards me some of these buildings. So, for instance, let's say I want this token here, or I want to place this road there. So I place the road there, I'm going to take this token here, place it in my pool, and then I advance towards me the two buildings adjacent to my newly placed road. In this case, the purple one and the blue one. And I draw them towards me one step. That's my entire turn. A couple of other things that might happen is you might surround one of the statues. In which case you take that statue with roads. Okay, when you surround the statue with roads. Or you might take one of these shovel tiles. Which means you are going to be drawing some more of these buildings towards you. This continues until either two of the, of the uh, statues have been taken or the players are down to five of these roads and then the interim scoring is going to happen. Then one, once we've placed them all, the final scoring will happen. So I've done that. My opponent's going to go ahead and play. They're going to place theirs here. They take this token. They move blue and they move brown one step towards them. Then it comes back to me. I can place anywhere I want to. It does not have to be adjacent to that road. So I am going to place uh, here. And I am going to put that right there. I'm going to take this shovel, which I will activate in one sec. I move white and white. So this one twice towards me. And then there's two kinds of shovels. The golden shovel with a single symbol there lets me move any building one step towards me. The double shovels there, the crossed ones, allow me to move the neighboring buildings that I just moved one time each again. So I'm going to keep that, and I can move any one of them one step, so I'll move this golden one towards me. And uh, let's just, for the sake of the argument, show you how one of these statues goes. So my opponent's going to go here. They'll take that. It's white and uh, brown. So one towards them, one towards them. And then if I place here... I take the blue, I move white, and I move brown back towards me. I have now surrounded that statue, and I take it, place it in my play area. It takes uh, three to surround the outer ones. It takes six roads to surround this inside uh, statue, the inner statue. Once we hit interim scoring is when things get interesting. Oh, by the way, uh, you can also at the end of your turn see if you qualify for one of these. So, for example, this one says I have to control four districts. If I ever have four of these on this side of the, uh, of the track here, then I would take this one. 
control one district by five or more, or completely surround a district area. So, uh, you know, four surrounding one of these uh, uh, shapes. And so, uh, let's just go ahead and jump ahead and show you how scoring works. So we ha have our scoring sheet right here, and we are going to use the first column of each col color for the first scoring, and then the second column for the final scoring. Add those up for our final scoring and, and uh, to see who wins. So let's go ahead and uh, let me jump this ahead a little bit and show you how that works. Each player is now down to five of these connections, so we go ahead and score. The first thing we do is we check the longest connected uh, network that they have, and they're going to get victory points for that. So uh, purple, pink there has three long, that gets them six points, and then I have one, two, three, four, five, six connected, that gets me 12 points over here. Statues, I have one of them, they have none, I get a point, they get none. The tokens, you are going to score sets of tokens. The shovels don't count for this. So we have over here two blue, two gold, one purple, one brown. So a set of two is three points, so three, six, and a single one is one point, seven, eight. I have over here uh, three blue, that's six points, a set of two, and a single one. So that's six, seven, eight, nine, ten victory points for that. And then the buildings themselves. So each building, if you control it, will score in a specific way. So first one being yellow. I control that. I get one point per yellow token, plus five points on top of that. That gets me six. The blue building is my opponent's. That is one point per blue token, and then two points per district they control. So two blue tokens, two, four, six. Uh, the next one is purple, and I control that one, so I get a token, uh, one point per purple token, and then also one point per statue, one point per achievement, and one point per space towards me that that purple building is from the center. And so I have no purple tokens, none of these achievements, one statue, and one, two spaces towards me for a total of three points. Brown is my opponent. That's one point per brown token. And then they also score the longest road again at fewer points this time. And so they would get one point for that token. And they only have a length of three. That gets them just the one victory point. So it's two in total. And then the white building is theirs as well. For the white building, you are going to lose a point for every shovel tile you have. But then for every pair of tiles that are identical, you get three. So my opponent has three, six, minus two for four victory points. Now these achievements, if we had them, they would not be scored yet. They get scored just once at the end of the game. We add up these scores, so that is 22, 23, 26, 32 for my opponent. Or for me, rather, I'm sorry. And then over here, 18, 28, uh, 32 as well. And this is set aside. We continue playing until all of them have been used. And then we do it all again, including this time the achievements. And we see who the winner is. So we have uh, over here a few sheets with previous scores. As you can see there, the scores are going to typically be near 100. They're around 100. And then the game's over, and that's all there is to it. And so uh, that should give you a pretty good idea of how the whole thing works. You put these out, take the tokens, make sets, try to control these, try to control as much of the scoring as possible, and see if you can come out ahead. So let's go back up top. Let me tell you what I think of it. All right, so that is Prowler's Passage. Let's uh, talk about it. Let me dive right in here. Thematic ties. Does the, does the theme feel original? Is it well implemented? I have to disagree on both of those counts. I don't think the theme is particularly original. I don't think it fits the play itself, what you are doing in the game. And I just don't see it being particularly well implemented. What you are doing does not feel like what the game tells you you are doing. It does not really help to teach the game. I, in fact, it's, it's quickly forgotten every time I've played. We just sort of turn to the mechanisms at hand. And there's uh, 
Lots of those. Lots of scoring mechanisms, I should say. There's not really a lot of other mechanisms. But the theme just feels like it could have been anything. And honestly, a lighter theme, something a little more appealing, something that can uh, work for more people that is not as um, dingy, maybe? You know, it sort of has this, like, uh, underbelly of society kind of vibe to it. That's, I think, what they're going for. Doesn't really work that well. The aesthetic, component quality, is the artwork uh, useful, is it congruent, that sort of thing. I also have a problem here because I find the artwork on the tiles to be largely um, not legible. It is hard to see which districts you are next to. The artwork on them is, again, serves that theme where the buildings sort of look a little gothic, it looks a little uh, dreary. They just don't pop very well. The colors are not apparent or readily apparent. I Some of the shades, for example, the purple buildings, just to pick one, some of them are more pink than purple. In fact, they're all basically pink, though the building is purple. But they have different shades even among themselves because they're not all the same piece of artwork. I can appreciate, again, that they tried to add a theme to this, that they tried to add uh interest in the visuals but if it works against the usability of the game i have a problem with that and this one does the rest of it is all right the little wooden sticks those are cute the tokens are a little dark the the printing on them cards are clear those are fine just the board makes it less enjoyable to play than it could have been replayability does the game scale well or are there new things to discover it's only a two-player game so there's that as far as new things to discover, I think the puzzle can be fun. I think engaging in that puzzle uh, it could be neat if you if you find yourself enjoying it. At the end of the day, this is a perfect information abstract strategy game. There is no hidden information at any point in the game. Once you have seen the board, unless your opponent takes something you want it to do, it's all there. The, nothing new comes in. And again, it all sort of hinges the replayability on whether you find that puzzle enjoyable or not. I think it's kind of middle of the road, and I'll explain why in just one second. Game length. Is the game uh, repetitive? Does it uh, hold interest for the entire game length? I think the game is so short, it's about 20 minutes, that it does do that. I, I like the game length here. I think any longer than that would have been too much. The second scoring comes up fairly quickly, and the fact that there is an interim scoring, the, the first scoring comes up quickly, I should say. Uh, that interim scoring is cool. I like that. I like being able to focus on something quickly and cash that in twice. That's cool. And so I got no problems with the game length. I think it's good. Ease of play. Is the game fiddly? Are there any uh, extraneous rules? Things like that. Uh, besides the artwork making it more difficult to play than it should be, everything else is very straightforward. Like I said, the cards are clear. Your turns are very quick. There might be a little bit of downtime as you are thinking about what you want to do. Because this is an abstract. That perfect information app. It's an abstract with a theme, right? But it's all there. You can, you know exactly what's available to you. So there, if you are playing with someone who is prone to some analysis paralysis, that might happen. Um, but the game is not fiddly. There's not a ton going on. Turns are quick. Everything does make sense in the game. The only thing that's a little obtuse is all of the scoring. And I will, again, come back to that in one second. Uh, as in right now. Tactics and strategy is my last point here. Is the game balanced? Does it feel too lucky? Are there interesting choices? I think the game feels balanced. It seems balanced. It's not too lucky, obviously, because there is literally no luck in the game. But as far as interesting choices, here's my thing. Some, some, some choices are clearly better than others, right? So a long road, a long connected network, that's good, always. You're going to get points for that. Always. You don't need to control a district for that. The statues are largely worthless. You are going to get a point for each one you have, and you might get one other point for each if you control a specific building. Those are not so good. I, I They almost feel like they don't need to be there. They don't do much besides maybe trigger the interim scoring. Maybe. 
uh, or it might just go to the uh, you know each player having only five connections left. So that's fine. The players will know that a game in, right? You you will be aware that the statues are not really worth pursuing, and you want to have a long network. Um, but the reason why the inter- the choices are not interesting to me is because the scoring is so opaque. It's buried under... It's so hard to look at the board and say, I want the brown building. Because clearly that's the one that's going to do it for me. So on the one hand, no matter what building you end up with, you're going to get some points. It's really ultimately a, a little moot to calculate which one is the thing you should be going for? Try to pull them all towards you if you can. Focus on two or three. Okay, whatever. Try to get them over here. Which ones? Whatever. Or the flip of that coin is that you are good at this game, as opposed to me. I'm not really good at the game. You can puzzle this out. And if you are playing with someone who is evenly matched with you, then you both immediately know which one is the good building. Because everything is on the board. You can look at it and go, yep, in this game, with the way setup came out, blue is the best building I can control. And so you gobble up the blue spots, you know, you connect those. And then the next thing is, oh, next, after that, the yellow building is the best building. So I'm going to gobble those up. And that's not interesting. Either one of those extremes I don't find appealing. Again... Assuming that neither one of those extremes is really viable to you, then everything is just sort of a wash. All the buildings score in different ways, but it's hard to pinpoint which one matters to you. That's kind of how I feel about it. Now, the gameplay, as I said, overall, it's it's a pleasant enough game. It flows along nicely, but there's too many things about it that that I would change. Starting with the look of the game, for sure. But then also just the fact that everything is, the the scoring is so obtuse, so hidden. There are so many sort of layers over it that it's hard to pinpoint what to do even. You just sort of do things and then kind of see where you come out, you know. Uh, While certainly prioritizing just sort of having a long road. Because that one's apparent. You know you're going to get a bunch of points for that. Whereas the buildings, if you try to control one and then it ends up on your opponent's side, well, you get nothing for it. Um, So, I was expecting a little something else. The cover, certainly, as you can see back here, is very attractive. It's a nice cover. It's just not representative, in my opinion, of the game that you end up getting. You know, and, and that's too bad. I would have preferred here... A game with a lighter theme, better graphic design, maybe a little something else to not make, um, to not have everything be on the board and not allow the players to play a little more fast and loose, you know. Um, it's not awful, right? I'm, I mean, I would rate this game about a 5.5 or a 6 out of 10, but it's not up to snuff with so many good two-player games out there. There you go. Uh, If it looks good to you, if you think you would like it, you you did not find from the overview that the look of the board was uh, obtuse or obscured the actions available to you or made it hard to play, then give it a shot. You know, you might like it. For me, I think this is a pass, and I think there's, again, just too many better abstract games and too many better themed two-player games for this one to, to live in either one of those camps. So there you go. Those are my thoughts on Prowler's Passage. Thanks for tuning in and checking this out. I will see you next time. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.